Well, we're on the 118 and we're heading to Oxnard. Oh, Oxnard. Oxnard. My, Oxnard. When I told my mom about Oxnard, she looked at me funny and said, it sounds like bull testicles. Yeah, but little old ladies and grandmas can get away with that and then they're cute, you know? She was, she was old lady she, cute. She was. She, she was cute. almost professionally old yeah. lady cute appearing on TV right. as yeah. old lady cute. So she yeah. really had figured that out. Yeah. But she could say it sounds like bowl testicles. Yeah. Everybody would laugh. Everybody would just laugh. At any rate, the reason <laughs> we're going there is the Channel Islands Harbor is there. And at the Channel Islands Harbor is the Maritime Museum. And at the Maritime Museum is the best collection of model ships that I've ever seen. <laughs> some of which are amazing historic models yes. and we will show you those because that's quite interesting right so people have been going down to the sea in ships for well as long as there have been people and somehow when you get around ships and boats it's necessary to talk stupid like saying things like going down to the sea in ships well anyway by the 15th century ships were really cool looking so people started painting paintings of them and they became all very romantic and cool and anything that's really romantic and cool you also have to start building models of it now here at the channel islands maritime museum they have one of the best collections of both paintings of ships and models of ships which is what really attracted us here this is a model of a merchant ship. Now, boats and ships were used from the beginning for hauling stuff, because that's the best thing you can do for hauling stuff, is stick them on a boat, because it's much easier than trying to drag them across the ground. Anyway, ships became quite big and successful at trading with the whole world. That is, after all, how the Americas were, were discovered. And so merchant ships were cropping up all over the place, going all over the place. The world has been trading with the Far East and the Far East with the world for thousands of years and ships have played an integral role in that and still do if you check out the episode on container ships. At any rate, everybody that puts stuff onto ships has a need to defend the stuff or it'll get stolen by governments and pirates. So they built these war ships. Now, merchant ships were much more common than warships, but models of warships are much more common than merchant ships, frankly, because they're cooler. By the 18th century, these warships had become really, really amazing and incredibly powerful. They were just bristling with guns like this one here. And uh, if you got anywhere near one of them and it had a bad attitude toward you, well, you were, you were messed up pretty fast. Now, interestingly, there are some guys who build these ships in one-to-one -one scale and then go out and do sea battles with each other. And yes, there's a Toy Man episode on that, so you should go looking for that, too. These models are built exactly like the real ships were built, out of wood and planking. And then the planks, in some cases, are even pinned right to the frame, just like the original ships would have been with wooden dowels. Although, for purposes of these models, they usually use brass instead of wood dowels. But they're built just exactly the way you would have built the full-size ship, laying the keel, and then putting the ribs up on top of that, and then putting the planking over the top of all of that. Many of the older models were actually built by shipwrights who after a day of building full-size ships and come home and build miniature ships or after they would retire they'd build miniature ships or sometimes they just build miniature ships instead of drawing plans because they were better at building miniature ships than drawing plans and then they could build the full size off the model now this is the USS Constitution and it's sort of unique in that the planking has not been put over the whole model so that you can see the interior structure and see how the ribs fit to the keel and so on. It takes many thousands of hours to construct a ship like this. Now some of these things are very challenging because they're so teeny but many of them are challenging because they're so darn big. Some of these ship models are over six feet tall. Now this is the collection of Edward Marple. Ed built all of these ships. He was a dental technician and 
liked working with miniature tools and maybe not on teeth, so instead he would build ships. And then as his health failed, he had to give that up, and he donated his entire collection here to the museum. Ed was certainly a brilliant ship modeler, and of course these are all completely scratch-built right down to the blocks, the little pulleys and so on that are all hand-carved, taking many thousands of hours on each of these ship models. And the ship models themselves are quite large. Some of them are about seven feet tall. Many of the early ships had these incredibly elaborate aft castles where the captain's quarters were and other officers' quarters. And recreating that detail is an immense amount of work. In this case, all hand-carved little pieces of wood forming the aft castle on that ship. This ship also has a hand-carved wooden aft castle. This is the Sovereign of the Seas and is probably the largest ship in the collection. It's just gigantic. One of the things that distinguishes this from the other models in the collection is that the aft castle is all made of brass. The uh, detailed parts were carved out of wax and then cast into brass. The Ed Marple collection is certainly one of the most amazing parts of the museum, but there's another collection that's quite amazing here, too. These are the prisoner of war models. During the Napoleonic Wars, starting in about 1790, the French sailors that were captured by the British were allowed to build little tiny miniature ship models in their off time, which is pretty much their whole day. And so they built these little teeny ships out of chicken bones, because that's all they had to work with were the bones left over after their dinner. Some of these models are also built out of wood, but for the most part they're built out of chicken bones, and even the little pulleys, the blocks, are all carved out of chicken bone. Now it's interesting that the British allowed the French to sell these things and leave them behind in Great Britain, which is how they came here, and a lot of these French sailors went back to France at the end of the war very, very wealthy because these models sold for a lot of money. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for, oh, uh, we can't, we can't sing that no, because it's, it's copyright no, and Di Disney will rise up out of his grave and haunt me. Was he cryogenically frozen? You know, that's, that's just a story that they started because right after he died, they started that Disney on Ice show oh, thing and okay. it just, it turned into, a, no, he's just, he's just buried somewhere in a yeah, regular, sure. regular old grave. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's really fun. The Channel Islands Maritime Museum and some amazing oh, ship no, models. Okay. Oh, my oh, heck. My. I can't especially believe those prisoner of war ships. I mean, I guess as a prisoner of war, you have a lot of free time on your hands. Right. But good grief to yeah. build such detailed little ship models right. out of chicken bones. Right. Wow. Just amazing. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel and subscribed, I don't know why you haven't done that, because it's so cool. It's fun. It's fun. And you can get to the channel by clicking on the rocket ship logo down over here, and uh, that takes to the channel if you're not in full screen. Or, of course, any moment now, the blue button appearing right here that says subscribe. You could also go to toymantelevision.com and you can do all of those things from right there and it's cool and fun. Well, I'm not sure how you found this amazing video online. I hope you didn't find it boring. No. And we will see you here again in one week 
but another classic example of screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.